Okay, we've got it pretty much down to the bare bones now, and the reason I wanted to do this is so I now have the access to be able to easily slide the uh, saddle back and forth along the ways, and that will be uh, very helpful when we go to adjust it. So, although it takes some time and effort, it's uh, worthwhile to get it down to this point because it's really the only way you can, in my experience, that you can do a careful and thorough job of adjusting it. And in fact, it would be pretty hard to adjust it at all without uh, taking all these parts off. But now we can gain access to these screws, but let's take this off and take a look at the underside so you can get a better uh, understanding of what's going on here. And I could just slide it right off the end. Sometimes on older lathes, uh, down here on the back end of the uh, ways, there's a serial number stamped in here, and on the new ones, it uh, looks like it's laser etched in there, but on the old ones, it was actually stamped in with metal stamps, and that would raise up the metal, and that raised metal area sometimes would prevent the saddle from sliding off. So if you have trouble getting it off the end, and you don't really need to remove it, but if you decide to, and you have trouble getting it off, you may need to take a stone or a file and gently file those down, or you can just loosen the screws now that you have access to them and provide enough clearance to slide it off the end. Okay, now with the saddle removed, we can get a better look at uh, exactly what's going on with these plates. And as you can see, they're loose and wobbly right now, but when they're in position, of course, they're clamped up against the, the ways and uh, are quite tight, or at least uh, have just a little bit of clearance between the plate and the ways. So these uh, three cap head screws here push the plate upward, which has the effect of tightening the plate against the underside of the ways, whereas these two set screws with the lock nuts uh, set a limit so that the uh, plate can't go beyond a certain point. So when you make this adjustment, you're actually working these three screws against these two and uh, trying to get a balance where you have just enough clearance uh, but no more than you need to freely move the saddle along the ways. Let's flip that over and take a look at the other side. Looking now at the underside of the metal plate, you can see the two tips of the two set screws protruding here and they uh, just raise that up a little bit above the bottom edge of the saddle and it's that gap that determines uh, the tightness of the plate against the ways. So what you're doing really is you're uh, trying to create a balance of forces between the two set screws and the three cap screws, socket head cap screws, but you do have to be a little careful that when you're in the process of adjusting it that you don't over tighten these set screws and create so much stress uh, at these two points where these set screws are, you can actually crack the plate, or at least in the early days, uh, the these metal plates were made out of uh, relatively crude steel, and it was fairly easy to crack them. It looks like the uh, material is better and stronger now, so I don't know if that's still an issue, but in any case, you can imagine that uh, it would be possible to create a lot of stress right along the lines where these set screws are if you uh, overly tighten the three cap head screws. So just be aware of that uh, you really don't need to have it very tight. The key is to have it balanced properly so you have just a very small gap between the plate and the ways. I swung the end of the lathe out here to give me better access to the back side so I can reach those screws on the back of the saddle. And now I'm going to slide the saddle back on. And you have to make sure these screws are loose enough so that you have clearance on these plates to make it easy to get back on here. But you can see it is now uh, sliding smoothly and that's because I've got the plates very loose but there's uh, obviously way too much play in there. So next thing I want to do is just tighten these uh, socket head cap screws up finger tight and I'll reach around the back here and do it on the back side. I think I'll move it over here where I can get to them easily. All right, so I've tightened those six screws just to the point where they're snugging up against the, uh, or the plates are snugging up against the underside of the ways there. And so the saddle still moves freely. I'm not feeling any appreciable drag. But now you can see when I try to move it, there's very little uh, movement at all. So it's already pretty close to where I want it. And now I'm going to go ahead and play with these set screws to try to achieve that balance we talked about. 
So I'll work on the front side first, and I want to loosen up these lock nuts to make sure I have a little bit of clearance to move the set screws. And then I want to take my 2.5 millimeter hex wrench, and just as I did with the cap screws, I'm just going to snug those up until I start to feel some resistance and pressure, and then I'll uh, hand tighten that little lock nut, and then I'll just repeat that with the second set screw. And hopefully that didn't change anything enough. Yep, still moves freely. So after you make that adjustment, you want to make sure that you didn't uh, potentially shift your balance and uh, now you get some drag. So now I just want to repeat that on the back side. The uh, back side adjusted now and still feels good. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these uh, uh, locking nuts here. still feels pretty good. So we're getting uh, close to the point where we want it. Now I need to tighten the nuts in the front and then we we'll, uh, should be done. Alright, I just uh, came back around to the front side and tightened up my nuts on the uh, set screw there. But as I did that, you can see it moves freely here. But as I tighten this uh, locking nut, it's actually pressing up on the plate enough so I can create a little drag. So I'm going to back that off. I don't need much uh, tightness on those nuts, and I don't want to create any unnecessary drag. But it now is moving uh, freely and smoothly. And when I test for play, I still have a little bit more than I want. I can hear, if you listen carefully, you can hear that clicking sound, and I can just barely see a little gap opening up here on the back side. So I want to tighten this back a little bit more. I now have it adjusted just the way I want it. You can see it still uh, moves quite freely, but when I try to move it up and down, there's no clicking or play that you can see or hear. About the only thing you might be able to see is just a tiny movement of the oil film there. But what happens is if these are too loose, when you take a cut, the tool will dig into the work and it will lift up the back side of the saddle and that can cause uh, chatter or cause the tool to uh, either move away or perhaps dig into the work. But Whatever happens, it will uh, almost certainly not uh, be what you want. It will cause problems with your work, particularly if you're trying to do a, a cutoff type of operation uh, or just uh, an ordinary turning or facing operation. So if you have this optimally adjusted, it will make a big difference in the ability to do the work, and especially on a lightweight lathe like this. The tighter you can hold the tolerances, the uh, better your work will turn out. Well, I'm ready to reassemble the lathe, but before I do that, uh, this is a good time to take advantage of having the saddle off of here. And I had a little oil oil bottle here, and uh, it's a good time to put a little oil down here on these sliding surfaces for the half nuts. Since we have access, and this is a part of the lathe that, uh, unless you're doing a job like this, you don't ordinarily have access. and. Uh, they're not always real good about lubricating these moving parts at the factory, so anytime you have a chance to uh, get access to them, it's not a bad idea on the sliding surfaces like this to put a few drops of oil in there. And similarly for these gears, I don't see any obvious signs of lubrication in there, so I'm going to drip some oil down here behind this gear so it'll run down and hopefully uh, get down on the shaft there where it uh, mounts on the front side of the saddle. And with this other gear I'm going to drip some oil down behind the handle. I probably should remove that handle, but that's something I can do pretty much any time. But I want to get some oil down there on those turning shafts while I have the opportunity. Now as I was getting ready to reassemble the lathe, I happened to notice these scrape marks here along the bed of the lathe. And uh, it occurred to me that what's happening there this pinion gear that engages with this rack is evidently scraping along the surface of the bed, which it should not be doing. So this gear appears to be uh, too far inward. Now, that could be just due to the adjustment of the saddle or the positioning of the saddle uh, and the apron, because this there's a, a little bit of slop in these screws, and that's intentional. In fact, they're almost made like slots, I believe. Let me look. Yeah, they are made like slots, and that's intentional because you need to have a little bit of a fore and aft movement of the saddle 
in order to get it to align with the lead screw, as we'll look at in a few minutes. But it looked like this one uh, may have been adjusted so that it was too far in, causing that gear to drag along the bed, and that may also have been a significant part of why we were seeing that drag earlier on. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, hang the uh, apron here onto the uh, saddle, and I've already put the two screws in place. It makes it a little bit easier as you bring this up here to line them up with the holes in the apron. And let me get my uh, wrench over here, my six millimeter wrench, and I can get those started and uh, get the other one started. Now I want to draw that up a little bit, but uh, I don't want to tighten it up but just at this point because I need to get the lead screw in place. And the final adjustment and positioning of the apron uh, needs to wait until the lead screw is back in place because it has to line up with that. So I'm going to intentionally leave this loose for now, but it's uh, I got it pulled up uh, pretty close to where it will be so that the lead screw will fit through there. Make sure the half nuts are in the open position. Then I'm going to slide the, a little tricky here because it's not tightened down enough, but I'm going to slide the uh, whole carriage assembly down close to the headstock so I can feed the lead screw through. You know, taking my lead screw, I want to make sure I have the, the left end that has the longer shaft part. I'm going to feed that carefully between the two parts of the half nuts and on through this uh, rubber bushing here that's in the electronics housing and then out the uh, back side there as we saw when we were disassembling it. So it's now being held by the bushing down on the other end of the lathe. And then I can go ahead and uh, put the... Uh, pushing on this end that holds it up here against the uh, bed. So we'll go ahead and while I do that I want to get some oil. To, you want to keep these surfaces well oiled at all times because while this lead screw is turning it tends to consume that oil and if it ever gets completely dry in there it can seize up and uh, potentially score or gouge your lead screw or the bearing that it sits in. So you want to be sure to always have this one and the one at the opposite end well oiled. And that's something you should do uh, just about daily or at least weekly. All right, so we'll go ahead and get that uh, tightened down. One other thing I wanted to mention, I did this uh, while I didn't have the camera running, but uh, I removed the little threading gauge and it attaches right here on the uh, right hand side of the apron and uh, it goes with this hole here and then that little screw and I, well, the reason I did that is later on I want to, in fact right now would be a good time I want to bring the carriage all the way up close to this bushing. Let me first tighten this bushing down and then I want to give the lead screw a turn make sure it's not binding at all and in fact it is binding a little bit so I want to make sure that as I tighten this bushing up that uh, the lead screw doesn't bind. And in fact, it can take a little bit of tweaking to get that just right. You may have to apply a little upward pressure on it so that the weight of the lead screw doesn't uh, cause it to slope downwards. And once again, I'm having trouble with it binding. So there we go. All right, so now, so as you tighten these screws on this end. It's very important that you check for any binding in the lead screw. You've got to make sure that's turning freely. Okay, and as I mentioned, get oil in both ends of it. I'm going to put a little oil down on this end while I think about it. All right. Okay, our lead screw's good now. And here's the trick. The uh, half nuts need to line up just right with the lead screw because they have to be able to engage with it. So leaving the apron uh, loose like this, as I clamp, I want to bring this pretty close up to this bushing, which is a fixed point of alignment for the lead screw, and then wiggle the uh, carriage lever here until I can get the half nuts to clamp down onto the lead screw, and then make sure that's engaged. I can turn the lead screw by hand, and you can see the hand wheel is now turning, so I know it's engaged. So what that, what that does is it ensures that the uh, half nuts and the lead screw are properly aligned 
And once that's done, I'm going to snug these up. I don't want to tighten them down hard yet, but I want to just snug them up. And then we'll retest that. I want to make sure I can disengage the half nuts and then engage the half nuts and everything stays lined up properly. And I'm also checking while I'm at it to make sure that that uh, gear's not dragging along there. And it may be. I'm going to put a feeler gauge in there and make sure that I do, in fact, have clearance. I'm going to grab the little uh, automotive feeler gauge of, out of the drawer there. And uh, I'm just going to insert that back behind the end of the pinion gear and make sure that, in fact, there's a gap there between the end of the gear and the surface of the uh, bed that it's not catching on that and it looks good so there's no this is a happens to be six thousandths and uh, there's no magic number there but anything you know five thousandths as, as long as I get five or six thousandths of clearance I should be okay but anything less than that I'd be a little bit concerned that uh, I've got some rubbing going on and I can look in here actually I can see light between the end of the pinion gear and I'm hearing a little sound, and what I think that is, a little scratchy sound. And I think what that is, I'm not used to hearing that, but I think what it is, it's the gear rubbing against this plastic chip guard. And since that's a new feature, it's a, a sound that's not familiar to me. And of course, any sound that you hear that you're not used to hearing, uh, you ought to investigate, because it can often be a first indicator of some kind of trouble.